Okay, what's up guys? Mr. Fabella here. And back here with another lesson out of my backyard. I guess that's one of the only good parts of this. Uh, I miss my classroom, but at least I can, I don't know, wear a soccer jersey every day if I wanted to. But right now we're doing uh, section 9.6 in your books, which covers perimeter and area of a figure on the coordinate plane. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, before that though, we're going to kind of review things on the coordinate plane. So, okay, so I'm pulling this up here right now. Um, and this is like a review from before when we just learned how to plot points on the coordinate plane. So looking at each, each of these points, remember to find the point based on the coordinates or vice versa, you're counting from the origin. So you're starting at the origin right here and first you're going left and right because X comes first. So I had to to get to A, I had to go left twice, so that's why it's negative two, and I had to go up twice, so that's why it's positive two. For B, you look at the same thing. You go to the right one, two, three, four, five, so that's gonna be five, and then I have to go up two, so it should be five, two, is my ordered pair. And then do the same thing for C and D, and it's five and negative three, and two and negative three. Okay, so here it's asking for the perimeter and area of the figure. This is kind of what we're gonna be doing. But in a way, it's a little more advanced because things are going into the negatives. Um, so we're just going to be counting. We're not going to be doing any subtracting because we're not doing any um, subtracting integers yet. So if I'm just counting to find this part right here, I'm just counting. So this is seven. If it's a rectangle, that means down here it's also seven. And then on the left and right side, so this is going to be five. So the perimeter is going to be two times the length plus two times the width. So two times five plus two times seven. That gives me 10 plus 14, which is 24. And we'll just say units because it didn't say if it's inches or feet or whatever. Area is going to be length times width, and that's just five times seven, which is 35. And this is square units. Okay, so we have this example here. The rectangle has these vertices. Um, and it says to use the coordinates to find the length of each side. So a couple ways to do this. Um, I put in a coordinate plane here of the first quadrant because I'm going to plot the points. That's probably the easiest way to do this. So I'm going to plot out W, X, Y, and Z. So one, three is going to be to the right one, oh, up three, that's W. X is one, seven, which is up here. Y is three, seven, so I'm gonna go to the right three and up seven, that's my Y, and Z is three, three, so I'm gonna go right three, up three. And then it says it was a rectangle, so if I messed up anywhere and it, you ended up plotting points that were not a rectangle, then you know that you had to do something else, that you did something wrong. So I'm gonna connect these right here. From there, it's pretty straightforward. You have to find out how long each side is. So from here to here, W to Z, that's going to be two units. And here to here, from y to z or z to y, that's gonna be one, two, three, four units. Okay. Uh, then it's only asking for the perimeter. So perimeter equals two length plus two width. So two times two plus two times four, that's going to be 12. And then units. Okay, so now we're going to move on a little bit further here. Um, it says each grid square on the zoo map has a length of 200 feet. Find the total distance in feet around the zoo. So this is kind of putting in our uh, scale maps, scale drawings, bringing that into what we're doing here. So find the distance in feet around the zoo. So we're going to find the perimeter. And we're just going to do this piece by piece. Um, so first we're going to go from here to here. How long is that going to be? So if you're, so yes, you can just count the boxes, but there's a, an even better way. So this is going along the x-axis, right? So the coordinate of here, oops, the coordinate right here is zero. The x-coordinate for the gorillas is seven. So if you want to know how long that is, you can just subtract the x-coordinates. Seven minus zero is just seven. Uh, and you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the same thing. Okay, same thing over here. From here to here, that's gonna be three. I could have also counted the Y, so there, see? Because from here to here, the Y coordinate of the gorillas is 10, of tigers is seven, so 10 minus seven is just three. From here to here, 
that's going to be from 7 to 11. So 11 minus 7 is going to be 4. From here to here, that's we're looking at the y-axis. So this is from 7 down to 3. So that's another 4. Then from here to here, I'm looking at the x-axis because I'm going horizontally. I'm going from 11 down to 7. So that's going to be another 4. And then from here, reptiles, um, vertically, I'm going to the y. So from 3 to 0, 3 here to 0 here, that's 3. And then finally down here, well, that's we already did the top part, right? That, that top part right here is 7. So that means this is also going to be 7. And then finally, this last part right here, um, I'm going from 0 to 10. So that's just going to be 10. All right. So now I'm just going to add all those up. Um, I can kind of do this a little faster. So that's 10, that's 10. So 10, 10, 10 is 30 uh, plus 8 plus another 4 is going to be 42. Okay, 42 units. So if you stop there, then, because this is a kind of a long problem, you might have forgotten already that the question is asking to find the total distance in feet because each grid is worth 200 feet. So all you need to do is take 42 and multiply that by 200. So that'll be 8,400 and that's gonna be in feet, not feet squared, this is perimeter. So we're just talking about how long it is. Okay, so right here, uh, it says the figures drawn on paper shown, find the area of the figure in square units. So first of all, we're gonna have to decide how we're gonna find the area first. So you can look at this in two different ways. You can look at this as a trapezoid, which it is because it's a four-sided figure and these two are gonna be the bases because they're parallel to each other and there's only one pair of parallel sides. Or you could look at it as a rectangle plus a triangle. So you can do it whichever way you want. I'm gonna do it as a trapezoid because it'll be faster that way. way. So for the trapezoid, I'm gonna write out how to find that. If you forgot, it's one half base one plus base two times the height. So let's figure out what the base one and base two is. So this is gonna be base one, this is base two, and the height is perpendicular to that. So you can see those two are perpendicular, this is the height. And then you're just gonna count. So one, two, three, four, five, six is the base, uh, B1. B one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is B2, and the height is gonna be four. And then now you just fill everything in. So area is going to be one half, six plus eight times four. So one half times 14 times four, seven times four is gonna be 28. And this is in square units. Okay, and if I really wanted to count, uh, that would actually work. So why don't I try that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, twenty-four. Uh, 25, 26, and you're like, oh, what's what's going on? Well, actually, this right here, this is 27, and this is 28. They fit perfectly, so 28 units squared. Okay, so right here it says a figure has vertices of these, E, F, G, and H. Graph the figure and classify it, then find the area. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to graph these. I'll fast forward to this later. Okay, and how about that? That looks like a trapezoid to me. Four-sided figure. These two uh, sides are parallel. The other two are not parallel. So that's what a trapezoid is. So that's a trapezoid, because it did say to um, classify it, and then find the area of the figure. So we just actually did that. So area equals one half base one plus base two times the height. And again, what's really cool about this is if you totally forgot to find how to find the area of a trapezoid, for this specific one, you can actually split it up into a rectangle and two triangles. It'll be like three times as much work because you'll have to find three different areas, but you'll still be able to find it. But since we do remember the area of a trapezoid, or you could just look it up, um, we're gonna do it this way. One half, base one, We'll say this is base one, and this is base two. Base one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus one, two, three, times the height. So the height is perpendicular to the base. So be careful where you count, because if you start counting like here, one, two, three, that's not, that doesn't go all the way down to the base. 
So the height should be, let's go from the middle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the height should be seven. And then you just go through this as you normally would, uh, following the order of operations. So I have to add what's in the parentheses first, then I can multiply from left to right as I see fit. So this will be 35 units squared. So again, if I really wanted to, I could count the little squares and there would be 35 square units. So that was a quick lesson on finding area and perimeter and classifying shapes on the coordinate plane. So hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.